<clears throat> Greetings, everyone. Earlier today, I had the good fortune to address some classes at a local Catholic high school who are doing a unit on Buddhism. And for many years, I've visited many high schools actually here in the Minneapolis St. Paul area to talk about Buddhism when the students are doing that unit. <clears throat> and what the teachers almost invariably want is for me to lead a very short meditation experience for the students because uh, meditation, zazen, is so central to the practice of zen. And so I lead the students through about five minutes of simple body and breath awareness. And one of the things I was encouraging the students today to do was to notice their connection to the earth. It's an instruction that I often give when I'm teaching mindfulness of body or instructing people in Zazen is to start by just noticing their connection to the stillness of the earth through the soles of their feet or their seat or in the back of their chair, depending on what they're sitting in or on. And then at some point I encourage them to also notice the landscape of their breathing where in their body they feel the breath most easily, the rising and the falling, the expansion and the contraction, the changing temperature and texture and sounds, the rhythm of the breath. And then finally, I encourage them to notice that both of those things are happening at the same time. That some part of their experience is registering that they are constantly in contact with the great still earth, that it's supporting them, it's holding up everything that they are, everything that they're thinking and feeling, everything that they can remember, everything they want to be. They're always in contact with this massive, stable source of stillness that we call the earth. And at the very same instant, they're also always experiencing this constant dynamic flow, this unceasing changing landscape that we call the experience of breathing. That the gap between stillness and movement doesn't exist. That both are happening at the very same time in the very same moment of experience. That stillness and movement are non-separate. And during one of the breaks between the classes today, I was checking my email and I checked the Caring Bridge site for a dear friend of mine in a contemplative community that I've been part of for some years off and on. And I heard that she finally passed this morning. So I remembered that central to the Zen understanding of existence is the unity of birth and death, the non-separateness of birth, life, and death. We can't find a gap between them. Just like stillness and movement, I can't find a space and as I watch my heart get heavy and my breathing feel labored, I notice there isn't a gap between grief and joy, between samsara and nirvana, between pain and contentment, that our experience of being alive is much more unified than we usually imagine, conceptualize, and think of it as being. I'm offering these thoughts to you tonight because after finishing the memorial verse and the memorial chants this evening for my friend, 
I'm feeling the reality of that non-separateness very closely. And I encourage you in your own meditation practice, whatever that looks like, to engage even a little bit with these ideas. That when we find ourselves saying no to parts of our lives, to parts of our fear and our suffering around death, that we're saying no to the whole thing. We can't be okay with life and not okay with death. It actually doesn't work. We can't actually be okay with the up parts of our lives and not okay with the down parts because they're not separate. And when we try to block out, hold at arm's length or distance ourselves from anything, we're blocking out and saying no and distancing ourselves from everything, from our lives, from our enlightenment, from love. I encourage you to see your practice as an invitation to constantly expand your heart's awareness of what this great thing that we call life and death is. And I encourage you to constantly find those gentle edges of what you're willing to be with and see if you can breathe into them for just a moment or two to expand just a little bit what you can hold, what you can accept, and even what you can grow to love. Because indeed, for me to love my friend's life as I do, I have to deeply accept and love her death as well. As I try to love my own, as I try to love the life and death of all beings. It's a big invitation, but it's also a simple one. Let's just find the things we're afraid of and see if we can lean toward them just a little. I hope this has helped you, and I bid you peace. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for your practice.